But at the end of the song, it's you put your whole self in, and that's what we're going to talk about tonight. What does that look like? We're putting our whole self in. We're going to talk about worship. Um, worship is the total commitment of the total person for your total life. All in. You're all in, all in, all in, okay? Total commitment of the total person for the total of your life. Now, when you guys think of, and you can decide what you want to think of, a basketball player, a volleyball player, a, a swimmer, when you think of anything like that, how do you know that that's what that person's into? Let's take a, what do you guys want to take? Basketball player. How do you know somebody is into basketball? Just shout out. Yes, you guys are good. So I heard they look like it because they dress like a basketball player. They maybe carry a basketball around. They talk like a basketball player. They are all in, right? Because they're a basketball player. Um, I was thinking about this. I want you guys to think about your day, an average day. And we'll take a school day, an average school day. And think about what things do you do during that day that take up your time. How much time do you spend on media or entertainment, which would include your, your phones, your iPads, your TV, your Xboxes? Just think in your computer, think in your mind, come up with a number of how much time you would spend a day doing that. How much time, somebody shout out different times that they think three hours, two hours, an hour, one to two. How much time do you spend a day going to school or, th or thinking about education or doing your homework? Um, 10, six, 12. How many hours a day do you spend eating or thinking about eating or preparing your food? <laughs> so it's interesting. If you were to hang out with somebody, if you were to pick somebody from this youth group and hang out with them for a day, you would be able to tell what they're into at the end of that day by what they talk about, what they spend their money on, how they spend their time, right? So if you spent any time with Holly, you would realize that she's really into horses because she talks about them all the time, right? That's what she, she loves and she likes, and that's good. Like, we can learn about different things. Do you know... Um, on average, and this is from a CNN report, on average, teenagers, this blew my mind, spend nine hours a day on media. So that includes all your electronic devices. They look at their media devices at least 100 times a day. So checking Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat. Now, I'll give you a little bit of slack because tweens, which are 8 to 12, so that's some of you, it's only six hours a day. Which is amazing because you're spending how many hours at school? Eight? Well, maybe you're spending some of that doing the electronics. I didn't think about that. But isn't that interesting um, that that much time is being reported? So tonight we're going to talk about worship and what worship means. And I have this funny little skit that I want you guys to look at. The, what's the skinny on worship? So take a look at this. So that was just a silly uh, little parody of what worship isn't. Um, before we start, if somebody wants to pass out paper and pen real quick, or get a couple of people, you'll need a paper and pen, go ahead, grab it, and turn in your Bibles to Romans 12, and we're going to look at just two verses tonight. Romans is in your New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, and Romans. You're going to need your Bible, so if you don't have one, grab one from the different places. Probably not. Okay, Romans 12. Get a paper and a pen and Romans 12. <laughs> I tried not to laugh because my mic was on, but it's really funny. And I'd already heard that twice or three times today. <laughs> oh, well. I know, right? Laughing's good. Okay, so Romans 12, 1 and 2. It's in the New Testament. Look it up in the beginning if you need to find where it is. And we're going to start off uh, by praying, and then we're going to dig in to see what God has to say about worship. Once everyone gets there, these guys over here need one. 
Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for laughter. We thank you for fun. We thank you um, especially for your word that we can learn about what it is and how it is to worship you. And we just pray that during this short time together that, um, Holy Spirit, you would just illuminate the scriptures to us so that we would leave here with a knowledge and, and greater understanding of how to worship you. And we thank you for everything that you've done for us. In your name we pray. Amen. So what does worship mean? Worship means to glorify and exalt God. Okay, to glorify and exalt God. That's in your notes. To show our loyalty and admiration to the Father. Father meaning God. Did you guys know that we were actually created to worship? We were created to worship and glorify and enjoy God forever. So if we were created to worship, isn't that something that we should talk about? Because maybe we don't really know if we're doing it or not. So this is an important topic to us. So we're going to turn to Romans 12, and I'm going to read verses 1 and 2. This is from the Apostle Paul, and he gives us a good example of what true worship looks like. It says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, and this is in the top of your notes if you couldn't find it in your Bible, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So this passage is all about worship, why we worship, how we worship, and we're going to break it on down. So the first part we're going to look at is verse 1, part A. So just the very first part of, of, of verse 1. And that is in view of God's mercy. So number one, we worship because of God's mercy to us. Now why is that important? It's important to realize because mercy is not getting what we deserve. Now, we know because we've been taught this that we are sinners, and so sinners, as sinners, we deserve death. In Romans 6.23, it says the wages of sin is death, right? But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. In Romans 5.8, it says, but God demonstrates his love for us, and while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So it's important to know where we're coming from, um, we are able to fully worship God when we understand the mercy, not getting what we deserve that he's given to us. There was a cool story that I found, um, if any of you guys are World War II fans, um, but there was this pilot, okay, and he was over Germany, and they were in this battle, and he found himself all alone, and a German bomber was coming at him. Now, at this point in time, his bomber had been shot and was killed. Um, many of the men on his Air, air, I don't even know what to call it, bomber plane, had been killed. It was just him and his co-pilot. He was 21 years old. He was from a farm, and this was his first battle. And so he's looking up, and here comes a green uh, German bomber coming right for him. So it's just these two guys in the sky over Germany. It was a week before Christmas. I have the date, 1949, I think. 1943. Um and they're like, it's over. We're going to die because we can't fire at him. He's got perfect aim at us. And as they could see the pilot in the other plane, they looked again. And he looked at the Americans and he just nodded and he went right by them. And he had mercy on the Americans. He should have shot them and killed them. They were in war. They were above German territory. But he had mercy. He did not give them what they deserved. The Americans had probably shot down some of his pilots. And years later, when the war was over and life went on, this pilot went back and he found this German um, pilot. And they talked about it and they cried together. And I just thought, wow, what an example. That's just a little example of us not getting what we deserve. Have you guys ever... Um, disobeyed your parents and you deserve to be punished but instead of punishing you they said you know what I'm going to show you mercy and you deserve to be punished but I'm not going to punish you that might not happen but you know it would be cool if it did once maybe once um so I want you to think for a moment of some of the things that God has given us that we don't deserve and I'm not talking about materialistic things so not house car friends I'm talking about things that God has given us. So I'll list a few and then let's see if we can come up with some together. 
uh, love for eternity, grace, Holy Spirit, joy, saving faith, comfort, strength. Can you guys think of anything else that God has given us that we do not deserve? Forgiveness. What? Talents. Friends. What else? Huh? Love. Righteousness. Glory. I mean, the list could go on and on of all these things, wisdom that God gives us that we don't deserve. And so when we understand God's mercy and that, wow, oh my goodness, I'm getting something I don't deserve, it causes us to worship. Let's say you disobeyed your parents, you missed curfew, and you come home, and your parents, man, they, they are going to ground you for a month. And you come home, and they say, you know what, dude, tonight? I'm not going to ground you. I'm going to give you mercy. You would be like, Mom, I love you. You'll give her a hug. you give your dad a kiss. You'd be nice to them for a long time, right? And that's just a human nature. So with God, when we really fully understand that we are not getting death like we deserve, causes us to worship him. So the next question would be, well, then how? How do I worship him? So let's look and see what the Bible has to say. And we're going to look at the second part of verse number one. And it says, Offer your bodies as living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Okay, don't freak out. We're not talking about human sacrifice here. In fact, I have a kind of a funny story. I don't know if this goes or not, but anyway, it's about bodies. It's about a body being sacrificed, kind of. But my parents are missionaries, and one time they, told, they tell of a story of them being in a tribe, and this lady worshiped the devil. She was a devil worshiper. I wouldn't recommend it. And they were coming to go visit with her and hopefully pray with her and talk to her. And she saw them coming and she freaked out so much that she ran to this field. So she was probably like where Mike is back there and my parents were here. And she took a machete, which is like a big, sharp knife. And she started chopping off her fingers one by one and eating them. Okay, that's not what we're talking about here, right? That really happened, but I thought, who? where can I put that story in? Right there. Okay, that is not what we're talking about, not physically sacrificing yourself. So so what are we talking about? Hey, it's junior high. You got to add stuff like that, right? It's cool. It's cool. So we're talking about, and this is point number two, we worship God with our whole self, our whole self. We worship God with our whole self, our mind, our body, our attitude. This means, okay, and this is what this means. We worship God with how we dress, how we talk, what we choose to watch. Basically, from the moment your alarm goes off, bing, bing, to the moment you go to bed, you have opportunity to worship God. What does that look like? What do you mean how we dress? So you're in the closet and you're looking at all your clothes and you're deciding what am I going to wear? Do you know that can be a worship experience? Because you are asking God, what can I clothe myself with that one, hey, I can look cute because it's okay to look fashionable, but not be revealing if you're a girl or not be inappropriate. And did you know girls and boys, what you choose to wear is an act of worship to God. I don't know if you've ever thought of that. What about, let's take our basketball player. How can the basketball player worship God on the court? Well, it's an act of worship when he takes the talents God has given him and he decides he's going to try his hardest and work his best with the talents God's given him. That's an act of worship. It's an act of worship when the volleyball player says, you know what, I'm going to have a good attitude. I'm not going to swear. I'm not going to cuss at the ref. And I'm going to have good sportsmanship. So I don't know if you guys have thought about that, but worship is more than just singing. In fact, I was talking to a student the other day, and I said, what is worship? And they said, singing. And I think sometimes we think, oh, we go to church, and we go to worship, and that's singing. But that's not what we're talking about here. A lot of times when we're singing, we're singing about God. Okay? Worship is to God. You see the difference there? Now, a lot of times when we're singing, we're singing praise. We're praising God, and that's awesome. The scripture is full of verses that, that tell us to praise God. In fact, scripture says that if we don't praise God, the rocks are going to praise God. So praising God is an awesome thing. But let me tell you, I can praise God. I can praise my dog. I can praise uh, my child, okay? So praise 
is just telling somebody, affirming them how good they are, right? But worship is reserved only for God. You may only worship God. Otherwise, it's called idolatry, which is a sin, right? And so you can praise God and you can praise other things, but worship is only reserved for God. Um, wor- praise is part of worship, right? But worship goes beyond praise. Sometimes we focus so much about how we're worshiping, like in the service, what we're doing, where, where should, we, should we clap, should we not, that we miss the point. I want you to watch this video real quick. <laughs> So that's just a silly uh, a spoof, basically saying, hey, if you want to do goalpost, you can do goalpost. If you want to do, what was that, carry the baby, that's fine. Worship, worship comes from our heart. Okay, so it doesn't matter what you're doing on the outside. It doesn't matter if Callie chooses to worship kneeling, but Ian says, I don't want to do that. I want to stand. Okay, it's your heart, where you're coming from in your heart. Okay, so I want to make sure you know that because sometimes we feel like we have to act a certain way. If everybody's raising their hand, then I have to raise my hand even though I don't want to. Um, And that's not worship. That's conforming to what everyone's doing. Um, It's not limited. Worship is not limited to one act, okay? But it's done with your heart and through an attitude of the person in the right place. Um, I think I skipped a part here. Okay. So number three, we're going to go to Romans 12, 2. And that is, so this kind of sounds crazy. So we know that we have worship because of God's mercy, to us, then we respond in worship. And how we do that, we worship with our whole self, um, but it sounds kind of impossible. And so Romans 12, 2 is going to give us some encouragement of how we can do this. And it says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will, his good and pleasing, perfect will. We could spend weeks just on that verse, but the part we're going to focus on is number three, we worship God by renewing our mind. We worship God by renewing our mind. Has anyone checked out a library book and then you didn't finish the book so you need to renew it? So you go to the library and you basically are saying to the librarian, here's my card, I want to check out this book again. I want to make it mine again. I'm going to renew it. That's what renew means. And we renew our mind daily by taking out the world's wisdom and putting in God's wisdom. You guys are filled all the time with the world's wisdom. When you're at school, right, and you're hearing things from students, sometimes from teachers, that are not truth of God. And so the world is telling you, act this way, dress this way, do this, um, watch this, say this, be like this. And so the renewing of our mind is taking those things from the world and recognizing those aren't of God, and filling them, renewing our mind with God's word. And we renew our mind. um, The only way to do that is through the word of God, the Bible. Listen to this statement. To know the truth, to believe the truth, to hold convictions about the truth, and to love the truth will naturally result in true spiritual worship. Okay, so when you know the truth of what God has to say about you, who you are, whose you are, and who he is, you'll automatically want to worship him. Now music, don't get me in trouble here, but music as such has nothing to do with worship. Oh no, what did she say? Music as such has nothing to do with worship. Music can't produce worship. It can produce emotion while you're worshiping. Um, But music is not the origin of worship. It's an expression of worship. I don't know if that makes sense, but you don't need music to induce your worship. True worship is centered on God and God alone. And you can do that, like we said, for a variety of ways that we've already talked about today, tonight. Sometimes, and People get caught up again on how they should worship, and that's when I was supposed to play the Tim Hawkins video. Skip. There we go. Anyway, so we should worship from the heart and the way God designed. Worship can include praying, 
reading, God, reading God's word. Do you know it's a worship act of worship when you obey God, when you obey your parents? Do you know it's an act of worship when you serve, when you get outside of yourself and you serve others? There's lots of things you can do to worship God. Only God is worthy of our worship. So worship is done for God. This is in your notes. Because he deserves it and for his pleasure only. Now, I came up with this little acronym after studying. I studied a lot about worship, and it's so hard because I just had to condense it to this little bit of nuggets. There's so much we could talk about. But I thought I came up with this acronym that hopefully will help us. So worship, the W, is the word of God. O is obedience to God. R, repentance of our sins, causes us to worship when we repent. S, servanthood. H, it's a heart condition. I, it's inspired by God. And P, is praise for what God has done and who he is. Did everyone get all the notes? Because I, did we get all that? The biggest thing I want you guys to take away from this is worship is a lifestyle, not an activity. Okay, you don't go to church and worship, and then you're done for the rest of the week. It's a lifestyle. It's from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to sleep. You have opportunities to worship, and worship is only to God. Not about God, but to God. We're going to end. We're going to end with a short little video, another funny clip, and then we're going to play a game, and we'll see how we, if we like this, play a game, talk, play a game, see how that works, and then we're going to worship together with the high school, and it's going to be awesome. If you guys have questions about this, please talk to your leaders, talk to me or Reg, because there is so much about worship that we could unpack, so I just gave you like a little nugget, but it's a cool nugget, wasn't it? Okay, so go ahead and play this video, and then I'll tell you what to do next. This is what if worship was like an NBA game. All right, so that was just a little another silly uh, thing about worship. But the three things in your notes, let me recap real quick. We worship God because of his mercy to us. We worship God with our whole self, and we worship God by renewing our minds. I'm going to pray, and then we'll play a game. Heavenly Father, we thank you for... Wow, just your words. We thank you that uh, you allow your people that you created to worship you. You alone are worthy of our praise. Let us not flood our minds and our thoughts with things other than you. Help us as we go out from here and we go to our schools and um, our jobs and the different things that we have, that we would keep our eyes and our minds focused on you and worshiping you throughout our day. In your name we pray. Amen.